my paranormal experiences span over 20 years with my family. My first paranormal experience was when I was 15 and it was in 1996, something like that. So what happened was I'll, I'll lay this sort of situation out. My grandma owned a golf course in a very rural part of England. And what happened was me and my sister, my dad were just there for a summer holiday. And it was a lovely, bright day during the day. And during the night, it was a, a full moon and it was very light outside. It was very blue, uh, that very nice hue of a, a blue outside. Well, anyway, what happened was we were playing late night cards, me and my dad and my sister, just on the dining room table in the kitchen. And we kind of got tired about one o'clock-ish, two o'clock-ish um, in the morning. So we went upstairs because this house was on sort of like the very tip of a golf course. My sister went to this blue room. Uh, me and my dad went to this uh, green room because I was 15. My dad wanted to sleep in this massive double bed. And because I was 15, I said, look, I'm not very comfortable with this. I want you to sleep on the floor. So I slept on the floor nearest the wall. And so we went to bed. And then my dad started not crying, but he shouted out, James, what's that white light? What's that white light on the wall? And I kind of opened my eyes because we'd just gone to bed. And I looked at the wall and there's nothing. And the windows were uh, obviously opposite the wall. And outside, if you kind of picture it there's a huge huge garden massive garden that my grandma took care of and then beyond the garden so about 200 300 yards was a huge huge forest really thick and really dense but at that time it wasn't really um too dense but obviously since over time it is quite dense now so i woke up i looked at the wall and i couldn't see anything and I said, Dad, what are you talking about? So I just went back to sleep. And then my dad shouted. And, but this time in his voice, there was like this really weird sort of I'm worried type of voice. So I opened my eyes. I sort of sat up and I looked at the wall and there's nothing. And I said, Dad, what are you talking about? And as soon as I said that, the room lit up with the brightest, whitest light I've ever, ever seen. I've not seen a, a whiter light like it. And so I sort of, I was, you know, I was, I was a child, I was 15. So I looked at it and I was like, what is that? It can't be a tractor or car driving by the road. Because it, it was rural, like I said. So, and you do get tractors sort of, they plough in October, roughly, but we're in August. So it's, it's really strange. So like any child, I got up, walked to the window and saw this incredible sight. I saw this UFO, this perfect triangular UFO. And it was in the middle of the forest, hovering above the ground, because I could see the ground below it, hovering. And it went really slowly, hovering left to right, really, really slowly. And then I got a flash in my eyes and um, I was like, whoa, what was that? But it wasn't like, you know, when you get like um, one of those old cameras and you get like a flash and it flashes in your eyes and you get that weird pattern in the back of your eyes. It wasn't like that at all. It was just just a flash and my eyes were absolutely fine afterwards. But what I did see was a flash and then this huge searchlight going right around the golf course onto the fields at the back and then hitting the house. And I remember when it hit the house and came back, I ducked and then it went round again and I was so shocked I wasn't scared though I was just so shocked at what I was seeing because I know planes and I know when I was very very young I grew up on a, an RAF base so we saw hurricanes taking off we saw uh, Chinooks 
you know, helicopters, all sorts of things taking off. And I, I was so into it as well. You know, I've got an old picture of my dad actually um, with me as a baby or a toddler sitting on a massive tank. Uh, I, I don't know what the tank was, but I know I was sitting on it. But yeah, so I saw this thing hovering in the uh, in the forest. And so what I saw was um, this triangular sort of metallic object. It was it was triangle, it, a usual saucer shape. And it had orange lights, it had yellow lights on the bottom. And in the middle, it had these weird, I get a little bit nervous now, but I'm like, I just remember these sort of windows that had, it looked like things were moving inside. And uh, I couldn't make it out though. I couldn't, and I just, I, I, I got really, not worried, but I got concerned about that. And then on, obviously on the top of the uh, the crop, and I say it's a UFO, it's not a UFO at all, it's a spacecraft. It was hovering on top of it was this massive searchlight that was hitting the house, creating this massive white light in the room and then going right around the fields and then doing it exactly the same. And so being a curious teenager, I opened the window which was already, you know, the, the curtains were parted. And that, and that's how we sort of saw it, the light in the room anyway. So I opened the window and there was no, nothing, no sound, no tractors, no propellers. And um, I was just stunned. I was stunned, amazed, astonished. It, it took my breath away and I, I just stood there and watched it go for, you know, just go from left to right. And it it's so strange. And like, I, I was not into UFOs or anything, you know, Bigfoot or anything like that. It's just, you know, like, just seeing this object and it went from left to right again. And then I called out for my dad. I said, dad, dad, have a look at this, have a look at this. So he came to the window and just as he came to the window, it went around a hill. So all he saw were these like what I saw was like red and green lights on the on the sort of like the field. And that's what he saw. So he was like, what? What? and I said, Look, I've just seen a UFO. I've just seen this weird, oh my God. I, I, and it's coming, you know, it, it, I was like, it's coming. You know, I was realizing what I'd just seen. This is a UFO. This is not normal to, well, you know, watch this, see this. So, um, so I got kind of excited. I said, Dad, yeah. And then he saw the green and white lights on the, the field and the yellow and orange sort of like glow. Um, but that was all he saw. And I said, Dad, that was a UFO. I saw a UFO. I can't believe it. I actually saw it was there. It was there. And part of me wanted to go out and sort of like get a closer look. And then the other part of me going, you don't want to go out there. You don't know what this thing is. You don't know what it can do. You don't know what these shadows in the windows were. And I was was excited, but, you know, as soon as it went, I was really disappointed because my dad, all he saw was these sort of like laser things on the you know the plowed field and he just said oh you know uh oh it's just the rf because there's an rf base like really really close to where we live or where my grandma lived because it's quite really really um well it's not rural now because everything's sort of like been built up but back then it was very rural and my granddad just built the golf course and it was all new and the you know the, the forest wasn't dense as it is now but that's what happens and after our little experience because i thought i was going crazy but what stopped me from being crazy i thought about this so hard what made me think i wasn't crazy was because my dad saw it at the first my dad pointed it out what's that white lie on the wall he said to me what's that white lie on the wall and I was like, he saw, he saw this, 
this must be real. This, this this isn't a dream. This isn't a hallucination. This is real. So I was so shocked afterwards. It was very difficult to get to bed. But I laid in bed, and this is a little bit of a weird thing, but I remember hearing people downstairs, but everyone was asleep. My grandma, my granddad's, my sister in the other room me and my dad were obviously up watching this thing and i just you know we went to bed i I remember hitting my head with the pillow but i heard these like weird noises and it it sounded like like someone was not playing the drums but it sounded like people were moving around in the kitchen and i got really really terrible I remember now I got terrified and then I just fell asleep and that was it. And in the morning, teenagers sleep in a lot, you know, so I slept in. I went downstairs. My dad was having breakfast with my grandma and my sister. I said, oh, my God, Dad, do you remember that UFO last night? And I said to grandma, we saw a UFO last night. Oh, my God, can you believe that? And she said, and and her she didn't dismiss it. She wasn't sort of dismissive. She just said, "Okay, James, that's cool," and, and kind of sort of I don't know deflected of the situation. What, what you know? What, what would you like for breakfast? So I was like, "Oh, you know, eggs, bacon, toast, yeah, you know, fried toast." And yeah, that was my first experience because I've got about seven experiences that I need to share with you guys so that was the first experience and that was really that got me my mindset into ufos and what did i just see so at school because i was still at school i went into the library and i found this this library book about the gulf ufos mexico gulf ufos or something like that in 1990 or 1993 i can't remember but i was so shocked i actually wrote it in my english exam exactly what i saw for my gcse's i remember now and thinking oh that's why i found but it was such a shock to my system because we didn't have the internet when i was 15 you know there's no face but no nothing like that it was just really really weird and and it, it really shook me to the ground. And I, I wanted to know more. You know, like I wanted to find out exactly what I saw. I wanted to know what I saw, how I saw. You know, it's just like so many questions. Like, what was it? Was it part of the RAF base? And it was just so weird. It's like, I wanted to, you know, like tell people, like, oh my God, but. Throughout the years, I, I found that it's that that's a really bad idea. And I, in the UK, I know it's not as bad as in the US, because I've, I've heard all these stories that people say, oh, they've seen a UFO or anything like that to their boss. And they get fired for it. Why would you get fired? Yeah, just because you saw something very strange, you know. It doesn't happen in the UK. If you say something like that to the boss, they will just call you crazy and just get, uh, you know, tell you to get back to work but yeah it it freaked me out to the point where i need to know i need there's a wanting and um and it was so yeah i just never had anything like that before apart from all these little smaller experiences that i've gained over the years now there's another experience that I was with my dad again because I've got a stepdad and I've got a biological dad. And he came over because he lives in France. He came over to my house to um, to stay and he came over to um, well, just spend time with the family, you know, my family, my, my children. And um, we're outside in the back garden. And where I live, it's a small town in the sort of countryside. It's where I live right now it's sort of surrounded by fields and this is not the only weird thing that's happened around my house um in fact i've just remembered something else but i'll i'll say that in a minute 
so yeah, we, me and my dad were in the back garden. We were like chatting, and it's really hard for me to get on with my dad because he's um, he's a very very <laughs> strange character. He, he's very. I call him the Michelangelo of the family. He he's kind of the black sheep. He's done really weird stuff, like really weird stuff, and he kind of drags me into it as well, which it's just a real real big pain. But he basically, we were talking in the back garden and it's rare for us to talk quite nicely without arguing. And he said something, we were taking photos of this uh, flower and it looked really awesome as a, like, a silhouette in the background. So we're just sort of chatting about that. And then I went to go and get another beer and I came back and it was dusk. And it was in the summertime as well. And so it was really nice and warm. And in, I shouldn't say UK because it's not a country, in England, where we live, we have like the day, obviously like daylight saving hours. So until about 11 o'clock at night, it gets dark. So we've got a huge amount of time we can spend out, outside, which I absolutely love. As in Brazil, my, my wife's from Brazil, the sun sets at five o'clock every day of the year but back in england it's it's wonderful because you can stay out you can drink party whatever so i came out of the back door and i saw this white light and i thought ah it's just an airplane and then i walked up to my dad and i gave him his whiskey and i saw i like, through this tree I, i've got a huge tree in my back garden this i and this light was really really white it wasn't really, really white, but it's white. And I've heard of those things that people see, I think it's like, you know, satellites or something like that, where they see a white light, they see it and then it goes. And then it's some sort of, I, I don't know, but it's, it's, it's something quite normal in the astrology field. But this white light came from the West, and it was the size of a small van, so transit van, Ford transit van, maybe a little bit bigger. And it went right over us and it just kept going. And I, I, I was like, oh, my God, Dad, look. I said, see, see, they exist. See, see this thing. And it, it literally went right over us. And the height of it was about 100, like maybe... Uh, I'm trying to think in yards, about 100 yards up. And it was really, really close. And it was, uh, and, and all we saw was this ball of white, white light. And it just went straight over. And I kind of, I don't know why, it sounds really ridiculous, but I got my phone out and started sort of flashing it with my, my torch. I don't know why I wanted to do that, but I, I, I did. But nothing happened. It just kept going over my house. So that was the second odd thing that sort of happened. And that, that was quite recently. That, that was about maybe 2018. So that brings me on to the next experience. And that was with an ex-girlfriend. We were dating not very long at all, but I knew she was a photographer. And I decided, you know, she fancy going and seeing a movie. So she you know, I jumped at the chance. Obviously, she wanted to date me. So, yeah, she, she came and picked me up because I didn't want to drive. And we drove to this uh, larger town called Stevenage. Now, on the way to Stevenage, there's a motorway or a highway or whatever you want to call it. But we call it a motorway. So we went on the motorway, we came off. And over this larger town, it's called Stevenage. Over Stevenage, there's like a flight path. You can easily see it because every three minutes, there's a, pl a massive plane, a jumbo jet flying right over it. And it's quite close to, to where I live. So I've been to Stevenage many, many, many times. But this time when I went about eight o'clock and it was sort of October, so it's quite dark. Me and my girlfriend at the time, we we're driving past and we just saw this plane fly. And I saw this orange ball in the, the sky. I thought, wow, that's weird. And then another plane flew behind it. And that, that's when I was like, whoa, 
well, that thing's not moving. It doesn't look like a helicopter because usually on a helicopter, you have like, you know, it's loud and it's also incredibly loud. And it's also got like uh, one light at the front and a light at the back. This had neither. So I said, you know, like in the car, she's driving towards Stevenage. I said, look at that. That is so weird. And then getting closer to it, we saw people on the street pointing up at this thing. And I said, look, this is weird. So I made her, <laughs> for some reason, I made her drive right below it. And we got a really good look at this like, orange ball in the sky. It was, a, it was higher than the white ball that I saw. It was about sort of 500 yards up. It was like quite high. And then I said, oh, 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 oh um, Kate, just get your, uh, have you got your um, camera? Why don't we like, you know, take a photo of this? You know, you know, maybe like, you know, sell it or something. We'll have it done. You know, we can analyze it or whatever. So she gets the camera out and it's a wide lens. So she pointed at it. She said, no, I can't get it. It's a wide lens. I can't get this thing. So um, I just looked at it. We, you know, we just sort of, uh, looking back at it now, we must have looked like real idiots because we just looked at it. And this thing, this orange light, just went from from zero. And this, in this, and this is a weird thing because I've looked this up so many. You know, I've read reports, of newspapers, uh, I've I've looked at videos, and this thing, and it did exactly what other things have done. It just went from zero to mark fifty. You know, it just went from zero. There's no acceleration. It just went from there to gone. You know, went straight up. And that was great. I know that was crazy enough just to see it. But it's not the end of the story. So we got it back in the car and we thought, right, okay, well, okay, that's, that was weird. Let's just go and see the film that we're going to see. So we went back into town because we I drove a little. Anyway, we went back into town. And we parked up and the lights on Cineworld was out. And it was really odd because, it, it, you know, it was a Saturday night. It must have been, it should have been buzzing. You know, it should have been people everywhere, teenagers everywhere. And this guy was like locking up. So I ran over to him and said, mate, what's going on? What, why are you closed? We're, we're going to see a movie tonight. And he said, oh, yeah, sorry, mate. There's a, a huge power cut to the whole area. There's, we don't know why. And I was like, oh, my God. I, 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 You know, it's a bit weird for me to say, you know, putting two and two together, but I've heard that UFOs or this craft actually try and take energy from energy plants or whatever. And just the two together were like, well, we've seen a weird, weird light in the sky. Now the cinema's closed because they have no power in the national grid. And... I just remember having an early night that night and I'm like, seriously, that's so weird. And I told my mum about my first story about my grandma, you know, at the golf course uh, at night where I saw, I saw the UFO and she, she's been like, uh, she's just takes the, the mickey out of me. And it's, I kind of get it because like, if you haven't seen these things, then you're like, what? But if you experience it, you're like, I want to know more. I want. I don't just want to stop and be ignorant and say, oh, yeah, I just saw a, a weird flying thing and, and just not get on with it. I saw this, I, you know, I've, I, and this was like the bread and butter. This was like orange light in the sky, saw it, flew straight up. I was like, Are these things following me. <laughs> and I was thinking, no, it can't be. Yeah, okay, I've seen like three now, but I was just like a bit sort of shocked about it. But I was not too shocked because I'd seen that first thing when I was 15. And yeah, yeah, I told my mum and she absolutely took the mickey out of me and so did my stepdad. And that was the end of that. I was like, I'm not telling you anything from me uh, from now on. So um, that was it. And I was just sort of like, um, yeah, I, 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 and nothing happened for years. And then my my 
it was like the, just the best. This 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 next story happened to my mum and to my little brother. Um, so what happened was my mum drove. Obviously, my my little brother he he used to go to Beavers. Uh, I think it was Beavers or Scouts, but it's one of the two. And they go to church and they do stuff. Right. And yeah, obviously you have it in the US. Um, and so, yeah, so uh, my brother got in the car with my mum. This is what my mum told me. She drove to the uh, the church, this massive church called uh, St. Paul's. Um, she parked up and all the, the scouts or the car, I, I forgot what, you know, beavers, whatever. They're all outside and they're all looking at this huge orange light in the sky. And I just, I, I, I don't think I could, I, I think I laughed for about maybe five minutes because it made me feel like she's seen them. She's seen it. She's seen it now. She seen it. She, you know, like it, it, just, it was like a confirmation, like, you know, you know, you've seen them. And I, I was just so happy that. And she was saying, yeah, it was, it was so weird, James. All the cubs and the, and the scout leader, they were pointing at it and, that, and everyone didn't know what it was. And then what happened was it shot off. It, it just went straight. It just flew off at high speed. And I thought, like, this is, you know, another orange light. And she said, yeah, it's about hundreds. It's just above the church, basically. That's why everyone was pointing at it. And she said, yeah, it was really weird. And everyone was talking about it um, when she went to go and pick my brother up from Cubs or Scouts or Beavers or whatever it was. And that was really, and she she was so shocked about it. It was like, and, and since then, she hasn't sort of taken the mickey out of me at all. And I kind of, um, in the back of my, I kind of appreciate it. But at the same time, I'm like, hmm. Like you've taken the mickey out of me so many years for what I first saw and now you see it and now you're like mm, you know it, it, and it just sort of made me feel a little bit angry and yeah I didn't write this one down but I've got a friend and oh, we've been friends for a very very long time and he's he's super super trustworthy and I, and I wanted to write this one down because there's so much he, he said and I'll try and remember as much as possible from what he said. But we worked together for about a year or so. And in that year, we went out for not a cigarette break, but we went out for a vape. And it was night shift. So I was, I was talking about like creepy stories. And I, I told him about my, um, I said, oh, have, you know, have I ever told you about my UFO experience? He said, no, no. So I told him about my UFO experience. And he didn't batter an eye. And I was like, I was expecting like, yeah, right, James, yeah, whatever. What are you, what are you talking about? No, none. He was straight faced. He was uh, almost like serious, you know, like he was serious. And I was like, mate, and like, and that's what happened, you know. I finished, and he said, you know what, you know what, James, something weird happened to me, and I said well, what do you mean? And he said, yeah, something like that happened to me, but I just don't know what happened. And he said, he, he kind of began to talk about it. And I was like, okay, right, this is interesting, right? And because, you know, I, I was interested in anything like that after I was 15, any, any weird stuff, any ghosts, any Bigfoot, after seeing my first encounter, that was it. Anything was game. I, I thought, you know, if I could see that, I could see anything, maybe a Bigfoot, maybe a giant tarantula. Who knows? Sea monsters? Oh, give, give it a go. Anyway, so he, he begins to tell me that he was working at Sainsbury's, which is um, a massive supermarket chain in, uh, in England, well, in the UK, in Scotland and Ireland or Wales. And he was working late at night. So he worked, he finished work about 10 o'clock in the evening it was dark he told me that and a friend of his or ours kind of called him up and said oh fancy coming around you know for a quick coffee and a catch-up so he's like yeah 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 all right mate so he went around 
you know, he got the coffee, you know, he sat down with the cigarette, he lit the cigarette. And then our mate or his mate at the time, he said, oh, yeah, why don't we just go to the balcony and just have a snoop around, you know, see what's going on down on, you know, the roadside. So they both went to the balcony, which isn't very big. I've been there before. It's quite small. And they're just looking. And he said it's summertime. It's a bright night. Again, it's summertime. It must be like a weird sort of trend. But it's summertime. He went out uh, with his friend, our friend, and he basically told me he saw this orange ball in the sky. And I said, it wasn't near St. Paul's Church, was it? He said, yeah. Yeah, it was because because Dave lives like like uh, two minutes down, and I said no frigging way. My mum's seen this. And he said, yeah, but I know like, he sees this orange ball of light in the sky, and it's near the church, and it comes towards them. And this is what he remembers. He told me this. So he sees this object in the sky to the right of him now, and. It was right in front of him, and now he's kind of seeing it to the side of him, and he doesn't know why. And he told me he looked down for some reason. He looked down, and his cigarette was like it's still in his hand, but it, there's no cigarette left. It was all burnt out. And he looked at his friend. I remember him saying he looked at his friend, and his friend shook his head. And they both went in and they sat down on the sofa and drank their coffee and it was cold. And they're like, why? And they're really confused. And he said, your clock's wrong. It says, it says four o'clock in the morning. And he said, yeah, that's weird. And then like, my friend looked at his phone and it was actually four o'clock in the morning. He went at 10 o'clock after work to see his friend. And, you know, six hours have been and gone. And I, I knew, I knew from the start, I was like, yeah, classic, classic alien abduction. And I was, I was just like, oh, my God, you're like me. I've seen it. You know, it was like, oh, yeah, join the family, join, join the club. I was so like, happy. And it was so, like, like, we got closer because of it, you know, like, oh, you know, uh, and then I, I talked to him about it. I said, "Oh, you know, why don't you get hypnotized and find out exactly what happened?" And he was kind of against it because when he sat down with his friend and, he, and the clock was wrong, he looked at his friend Dave and he, Dave said, "Don't ever talk about this to anybody." And he didn't. After that, he didn't. He didn't tell anybody after that because he felt, you know, I guess, embarrassed. But once I started, I'm quite up and coming I, I don't stray away I, you know sometimes and like because that thing that happened at work I told the guys at work um, a long time ago of my UFO experience I was taking the mickey out of and it was it was horrible I could understand why he didn't tell anybody and it was a relief really because he he told me that he'd seen shadow people shadow men at his house afterwards and I said, oh, you know what? Sometimes people, if they've been abducted by aliens, sometimes their parents or some relative in their family, immediate family, have actually been abducted themselves. And for some reason, it carries on genetically. And this really interested me. And I wanted to know why. So I've, I've read all the books on UFOs, aliens, everything. My, my wife had I thought I was crazy at one point, but yeah, I mean, and that that's what happened to my friend, and it made me feel brilliant because I, you know it made me feel awful for my friend because that you know it, he wasn't worried, but he was like, I don't know what happened, and it made me feel I don't know, it just made me feel really good that someone else, I, you know, it was it was like confirmation again from someone else saying, oh yeah, they're real. So I'm like, right, well, if me, my mum, my girlfriend, my dad, or one of my best friends, they all say they've seen something, they must be real. They must be here on Earth. They must. And I read so many bits on, on it. I found this professor 
in America, and his research was um, historical, the American Dream or something like that. And uh, he'd he'd got his tenure, so he, he he was a professor. I can't remember what uh, university, but he got his tenure, so he could write about anything and not get fired. And so he thought, right, okay, as a historian, he wrote about and investigated UFO reports and then slowly investigated alien abductions. And his name is um, David Jacobs, Dr. David Jacobs. And he's very, he's quite famous in the UFO field now. And I've wanted to uh, speak with him and ask him questions for such a long, long, long time because he's, the research he's done is over 26 years. So he's he's talked to abductees. He's, you know, he's found out the fraudulent ones. So he's sort of dismissed those. And the way he talks, it's very, very, oh, he's just telling the truth. Like the data speaks. These people tell me, you know, he said, if one abductee says there's a yellow elephant in the room and that's their story. And then he says, oh, he'll put it on the back burner. And then he'll wait for another alien abductee to say, oh, there, there was a yellow elephant in the room. And that's how he sort of portrays his data. So he gains all these bits of data. And these people don't know each other. They're from the US, Canada, the UK, all over Europe, yeah, all over the world. And he's, he's got calls from Italy, from Australia, people saying the same thing. And they can't all be saying, yeah, there's a yellow elephant in the room. Because if they're all saying there's a yellow elephant and it's not been on TV and not been televised, then clearly there's something weird happening to the whole population. And his sort of breakdown was it that we're slowly being invaded by them. They're creating genetic modifications to human beings with alien DNA, if if they have DNA. Anyway, so they're doing that and they're integrating these people into society. And if you think about it, if you wanted to invade a society, the best way to invade a society would be to subtly join in Rather than, you know, if you invaded a society, like, for example, I don't want to say it right now, but if, if you know, Russia is invading the Ukraine and it's so bad and it's the kind of perfect example that that's why a superior species, I don't want to say race because obviously it's not a race, it's a different species. The point is, I'm just saying that they're slowly taking over certain parts of the world that's what i've learned and and they look exactly like us they look like the normal human being but they can control other human beings telepathically and that's the only difference between them and us and his end game or his sort of summary of everything was that they're leading everyone into like a better world you know we don't eat uh, meat anymore we treat the world better there's no pollution there's no uh war but obviously clearly it's not working because obviously it's you know russia's being um extremely bad so anyway i didn't want to dwell on that so much but yeah so that leads me to sort of um some weird sort of ghost things that happened not to me my stepdad we're quite close he's a really good man I asked him after seeing this thing when I was 15, I asked him, like, you know, have you ever seen a ghost or anything like that? You know, he said, no, no. But my nana, his grandma, so my great grandma, I guess you could call her, he said that in our town, our town of Letchworth Garden City, it's, it's, it's a really small town, but it's built on Roman roads and and forts and things like that and the romans were like heavily in in this town they, they've got a fort on the top of a hill near another town and what she said because where she lived was on this roman road just off this roman road and i said so, so what what did she see uh, and my dad said 
she went down to the basement and it's weird to have a basement in a bungalow. So a bungalow is like a, like a ground apartment. So there's no stairs anywhere, but on her apartment, there's a basement and we usually don't have basements in the UK, sort of maybe in London perhaps, but not in a small, but anyway, she's got a basement and when she was younger, they bought the bungalow and, she walked down the stairs, turned the light on, and she flew backwards and uh, sat on the stairs. She saw, I'm not sure whether, it, uh, well, basically it was a troop of Roman soldiers in her basement. My dad was like, yeah, they were literally just there and they marched right through the wall. And I was like, what? And I said, what? Did she hear him? Did she? And he was like, yeah, yeah. They were talking in Italian or Roman at the time, whatever language it was. And it was very, it wasn't formal, you know, like they're all very wooden. And and he was like, yeah, they were all talking and they're just walking forwards. And, and I was like, so shocked. So like, what, really? And I went there. You didn't tell me this. He told me this afterwards and that house had been, uh, the bungalow had been sold and, and I really wanted to go, go and have a look, you know, I wanted to, you know, that, that curiosity, you know, it still hasn't killed me, but that wasn't the only weird ghost story that sort of happened to my family. Oh, actually I, I forgot to mention recently my children. So I've got a 10 year old boy called Diego. Uh, I've got a, a nine-year-old girl called Maya and a, a one-year-old called Evie. Now, we were going to the local supermarket in the wintertime. And I can't remember when it was now. But what happened was, and this was uh, UFO related, this isn't ghost related. What happened was we went to the car, which is just on the road outside our house. We just went to the car and the our road is absolutely lovely at the moment. It's got cherry trees just down the road. So every tree at the moment is blossoming. So it's all beautiful pinks and whites down the road. It's absolutely like, just so nice. But this happened in, I think it was winter. And we just went out and my, my children are so curious. And we went out and this is where my wife saw it. And I was like, what? We went out to the car. And um, I just unlocked it and I can't remember. I, yeah, I was carrying Evie and my wife got into the car and I couldn't get my phone out uh, fast enough to, to, you know, to take a picture of what we, what we saw was two objects passing right over us. But what they were, they were like T structures. They weren't like planes. And like, yeah, sometimes you'll have like a, T structures and that obviously like you'll see the end bit as a shadow or a darker bit and then you're like yeah it's plain but these things were like T's they are T bones they, these were like T's two T's in tandem flying together right above us and they had these neon pink and neon green lights and you know we were all looking at it both of them and my son said right oh my god dad is that a ufo and i said i don't know diego but uh, that's the weirdest looking plane and it, it was just so so bizarre so these objects that we just saw my boy said are these ufos dad and i i didn't have an answer for him i just didn't know i was like yeah they are they are ufos i don't know what they are unidentified flying object is flying right and it's an object it's a ufo I don't know what they are because we just sort of stood there and they, they just went over us. And um, now I'm thinking about it. I don't think I've got any missing time or anything like that. Like my friend did, but it, it, it was weird. I eventually took my phone out and took a picture of them, but it was just too late. They're too far away. And again, there's no sound, nothing. And that's what made me think, what is this? Because they just they just flew really quietly, and because uh, it was at night, there's no I, I couldn't see if there was any um, trails. You know, like planes like leave those trails of um, flumes, whatever they are. So yeah, that that was a uh, another sighting. 
that we had. It, it's it's weird because over the years, I'm 40 now, and it happened to me when I was 15. And I've had all these years to think about what it was or, you know, what did I see? But, and I know what I saw. It wasn't a UFO. It was a spacecraft. And I look back and I think, is it still around? Is it still out there somewhere? And like, if it's a spacecraft, it must have been made somewhere. You know, there must be a making or a factory somewhere that they're making these things. And, you know, it just... It's weird because when you see something so bizarre, you just want the answers, Vic. You just want to know what it is. It can be confusing sometimes because you just think, right, did I really see it? But I know I did. I know I did because my dad spotted it first and then I, I saw it. So, yeah, that was a recent sighting. I'll go into what happened about, oh God, about 10 years ago now. My wife was supposed to come on and tell you exactly what she saw, but I, I think she's nervous. Uh, although she's got lots of jobs to do, obviously because of the children. But what I can tell you is my sort of version of the story. So my wife Clarissa, we had a bit of an experience about ten years ago. My little boy was about one or two, and. It frightened me a lot. It was about two o'clock in the morning and I was sleeping because I had work the next day and I got woken up by a scream and a yell. My wife came running in the room into our bedroom, turned the light on. She had my little boy in her arms saying, James, James, there's, there's just someone in the house. So I was like, what? what? And literally, I'd just been sleeping. So I've been like, oh, whoa, 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 what's, what's going on? What, uh, slow down. What? And she, she, was, she was crying. She was, she was in tears. She was so upset. And I was like, oh, so I grabbed my baseball bat, which is right next to where I live, uh, where I sleep, where I live, where I sleep. I jumped out of bed and... I slowly went into my um, boy's room, a uh, little boy at the time. That's the bigger sort of, we've, we've got a three bedroom house and that's the big sort of um, big room where my girls sleep now. But I went into it uh, really slowly, turned the light on, no one in the bedroom. So I was like, man, he's got to be downstairs. So I went downstairs and I, you know, I was nervous. I, I'd just been woken up by a crying, screaming wife saying, there's someone in the house. So I was creeping down the stairs as quietly as, a, 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 as I could. I, I was just I was being really quiet. So I, I turned the light on really quick and jumped in the living room. No one there. And we haven't got a big house. It's a three-bedroom mid-terrace. It's, it's not big. And I went into the kitchen and there was no one there. And I looked at the locks, uh, you know, the back door, it was locked. Looked at the front door, it was locked. And I was thinking, what? what's going on? What's happening? So I ran upstairs, said, Clarissa, there's no one in the house. There's no one in the house. There's no one here. What's going on? And she was crying and sobering and she was, she sat on the, you know, she slumped on the bed and she, she calmed down and Describe the situation. It was so weird. She, because he was so young, she didn't want to leave him on his own. So I bought him one of those baby monitors that you can just sort of monitor from downstairs or upstairs in your bedroom or whatever. So I, uh, I bought one of those, but something went wrong with it or the batteries didn't work. So she, she went and sort of slept by the cot. And I remember going downstairs just to get some water or something and just looking into the room and Clarissa had a pillow underneath her head and she slept right underneath the cot. So I closed the door. So it's dark in the room. So I went downstairs, went to bed. She said she was asleep right next to the cot where Diego, our baby boy, was sleeping. She said... And it's not an old house, but in our house, when you walk into this bedroom, 
where she was lying down on the floor. You can hear someone walk because the the floorboards are really creepy. So when you when you tread down on your feet, you can hear. You know, it's very creaky. Uh, when I when we moved in, I should have screwed the floorboards down, but I didn't. I just I forgot to. So she was sleeping. She's all quiet, nice. He was sleeping well. She was sleeping on the floor. She doesn't like it, but she 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 was doing it. And she was turned towards the cot, towards the wall. So she hears this person walk into the room, walk, 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 right up to the cot. And what she told me was she felt like there's someone. And she turned around and looked up and there's this hooded figure looking down at my boy. And she, well, what she told me was she kicked really hard and she kicked and it. she felt his, his leg. She kicked his leg. And she closed her eyes, grabbed Diego out of the cot. She must have done it really quick. She's really super slow, but she and like she must have done it really quick because the way she she ran into the bedroom, turned my light on. My God, my heart was thumping so hard. And she still says today that it was real. And I kicked it, James. I kicked it. I I touched it. I kicked. And I said, look, what did it look like? And she said it was this black hood. She didn't see a face. It it, it was just looking down at Diego and wanted something from him. And I was like, how do you know it wanted something from him? And she said, well, it just, it did. And I was like, well, how do you know? And I couldn't get up. I was like, so I was kind of threw it off but I, and I didn't I didn't go to I didn't get any sleep that night that's for sure but it, recently I asked her about the what happened to us and she told me oh no James it wasn't at two o'clock no no it was at two o'clock that it happened but we went back into the room and it was seven o'clock in the morning I said no way I remember it happening too I was there I, I ran everywhere. And it was two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. Uh, we went to, back to bed. And she said, no, James. She uh, nearly had an argument over it. And she said, no, James. We went back to bed at seven o'clock in the morning. I said, but that's when we wake up. And I didn't understand. I, I, I didn't understand where she was coming from because, you know, she was panicked. I, I don't know whether she saw it or not. Oh, yeah, but the weird thing was, obviously, it kept in the back of my head. And I asked, I said, oh, yeah, to my mum. We're not very close, me and my mum. But I said, oh, um, guess what happened to Clarissa? I I told my mum exactly what happened to Clarissa that night. And she said, oh, that's weird. uh, Because your grandma, your grandma had something weird happen like that to her. So I was like, what are you talking about? (laughs) And she said, yeah, something like that happened to grandma. So there's me ringing grandma saying, how are you at the time when she was still alive? And she said, she was just about to give birth to my mum or my uncle and she gave birth in her house. And she's lying in the big, big bedroom. And she said, I just got to rest. And she laid her head down. And just about turned the light lamp off at the right hand side of her, and she saw this hooded figure looking at her. And she just said to what I can remember her saying was she just screamed, Go away, go away. And then she said she put her head under the sheets of her bed, and then she looked back and it's gone. There's nothing there. My wife says, uh, it's like Diego's um, guardian angel or anything like that. But I don't really believe in, you know, religion. I, I was baptised as a Christian, but I, honestly, I, I'm no medium. I actually, you know, I've got another story about medium. In fact, when I was 19, my granddad died, the same family as um, my grandma was talking about. He died. And my mum so many weird things that happened to me it's weird so my mum was super super upset 
and she used to go to the back garden and sit on her own like all day and come in like at night it was really really bad and um I was really close um, with him as well because I didn't have like a dad growing up so he's sort of like a role model for me so when he went it it, it was like a massive shock because it just it just happened so she she was so upset so I was working in a bar at the time and this girl that I was working with called Rosie oh god it's ages ago I said to Rosie oh you know what we get Chang because like, she was a barmaid I was a barman and she said, why don't you go and see a, like a medium or something? Well, actually, why don't you go and see my boyfriend's mum? She does like readings and things like that. I said, nah, I don't, I'm not into that. It's just too much. I don't believe in ghosts and things like that. It's, and anyway, eventually I agreed. I said, you know what, maybe it's a good idea just to sort of like go. And then I said to my dad, I'm going to this medium. And he was like, oh, don't go. If you are going and spending your stupid money, don't let them cold read you. And I said, what do you mean? Because I was like 19, 20 at the time. And he said, well, you know, you're like, they can read your body language and tell what you're thinking. And I said, Dad, what I'll do is I'll just put on my poker face. I won't say yes. I won't say no. I'll, you know, I'll stare at the floor or something. So that's exactly what I did. So I met this woman. She had a candle burning, which I thought was a little bit weird. And it was back in the days where, you know, she taped it for us. So she gave me the, the tape afterwards. So I sat down and she mumbled on about uh, weird things, uh, my future. And I was like, yeah. I, was, I just didn't believe it. I was just like, this is rubbish, utter nonsense. Until the tape ran out and clicked, you know, I, the old tape rec- recorder sort of clicked when, the, when they stopped recording. So the tape ran out and then she asked me, oh, do you want to talk to anyone? And I said, um, yeah, my granddad died recently and um, my mum's been really upset about it. I, and then it, for some reason, I just let everything sort of slip. Um, I said my granddad died and he was really dear to me and my mum. So it's just such a great man, you know, family man, really strong. And yeah, so, and these were the days uh, where Facebook and, and, you know, the internet was nothing. There's, there was no internet. To, to find out my background and not even like, because this is the friend's boyfriend's mum. So the, the friend that I was speaking to, the, the waitress, the girl at the time, she didn't know anything about me at all. You know, I didn't tell her about my granddad passing because it just, I'm not private, but I just didn't think it, you know, some conversations just, you don't, you just don't want to say things to people. And it's for me to work in a bar at the time was sort of like, um, like a break from like reality I guess and it's nice because like you get to talk to you know like the locals and and things but the tape runs out and it's it it so weird she asked me oh uh, is there anyone to speak to I said yeah my granddad uh, I'd like to speak to my granddad or you know if you can and she was talking to this spirit guide up on her right and um it just, it was really cringy, really cringeworthy. And, and then all of a sudden she said, oh yeah, there's a man approaching us. There's a man approaching us. He's, yeah, he's here. He's wheeling some old woman in a wheelchair, but he's here. And she said, yeah, Pete wants to talk to you. Yeah, Pete, Pete's here. He, he wants to talk to you. And as soon as she said that name, I... My, my the whole the hairs on my body stood up and I was like oh my god that is that's what everyone used to call him you know P old P and I was just I, I was I was <laughs> gobsmacked you know listening through this you know just rubbish you know thinking it was rubbish and then she comes out with this oh yeah he just wants to to tell your mum that I'm okay there's nothing wrong you know I've just passed uh, I'm okay. I'm with my mum now. I'm fine. I was so happy that it just happened. And she just sort of said that. 
I, 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 you know, it, I, I think I might have let a tear out. I think I might have let a tear out in the car on the, on the way back because it's just like she knew the name of my granddad. You know, like out of it, she didn't call him Peter. She didn't call him I don't know Philip, James, David. She she came up with Pete, and everyone called him Pete. And it was you know Granddad Peter, Granddad, and everyone called him Pete, and. um it was just such a shock to the system. And when I told my mum, she was like, yeah, whatever. And because I I said, look, I've got it on. And then I realised I didn't have it on tape because the tape ran out just when she asked me. And I was like, oh, no. And I didn't go back. I, I wanted to go back with my mum afterwards and say, look, you know, she guessed his name. It's so weird. But she, she didn't believe in mumbo jumbo stuff like that and i was a bit shocked about myself going myself but yeah i mean like you ten i might like, think i spent about 20 quid on it but i was just like yeah it's just just really odd thing to happen if you've had a paranormal experience and would like to be a guest on the show please contact us by going to myparax.com that's my para e x dot com. Thanks for listening.